What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and Show, where I, Graham G. S. Matthews, break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the Night 2 of WrestleMania 37 edition of WWE 24 that aired way back when on TakeOver 36 Sunday, almost three weeks ago at this point, on August 22nd, 2021. I broke down Night 1 of WrestleMania 37, that 24, about a week ago. Um, like I said, this is about three weeks late. I apologize for the delay. I was at SummerSlam, I was at All Out, it's been a crazy last couple of weeks, but this was worth the wait though, this was really, really good, and as I always say, the 24s are consistently great, this was no exception. Um, I was at WrestleMania this year as well, so reliving these events and the matches and the moments really resonated with me while watching it. Uh, this was slightly shorter than the first part. Uh, this one was around 45 minutes. The first one was closer to an hour, but it was still very enjoyable, focusing around, kind of revolving around Rhea Ripley, Edge, Natalia, Tamina, and um, Sheamus and their respective matches on the show. So we see clips of it raining prior to the event, which it was that day. It was a pretty bad, I don't want to say hurricane, but a pretty bad rainstorm that entire Sunday, night two of WrestleMania. Uh, we were at our hotel that day, and we actually lost power at the hotel. I don't think I've ever lost power at a hotel before, but we did that morning for like a good hour. Uh, that's how bad the rain was for the better part of the day. Thankfully, it cleared up right before the show was supposed to start. They didn't have to delay matters a lot like the day before, so we got lucky in that case. Uh, we see Edge entering the building. He says that he wants to make night two better than night one. Uh, Rhea Ripley talks about how she's happy that WrestleMania is two days because it's really allowed her to get her emotions out of the way on night one. Get that, you know, we, we saw her choking up on night one on the uh, on the stage along with the rest of the superstars. So she got that emotion out of her system on night one. Now it's down to business on night two. She advised for the Raw Women's Championship against Asuka. Uh, the only time we hear from Daniel Bryan on this episode is at this point in the edition of the show uh, where he says that he loves the chaos because they ask him how he's feeling going into the event because uh, he is the main event alongside Roman Reigns and Edge in a triple threat for the Universal Championship. I don't think we hear from Bryan other than that. Not that that's out of the ordinary because we only hear from Roman once, um, but it is interesting they didn't cut him out because by the time this aired, obviously now as I speak, he's in AEW. Um, but even three weeks ago when this initially aired, it was pretty well known that Brian was on his way to AEW. So the fact they didn't cut him out completely, which would have been hard because they focused on the WrestleMania main event, which he was a part of. It's like the cutting out Benoit of the WrestleMania 20 main event. You know what I mean? Like he won the fucking thing. Brian didn't win this, but and obviously under different, obviously under different circumstances was he uh, going to likely be removed, but he wasn't. So I was happy about that. But we hear from Natalia, who talks about the weather that day and how there's a tarp over the ring catching the rain and Rhea's worried that it's going to be like a fucking waterfall if it breaks while she's in the ring, which would be definitely terrifying. Paul Heyman said that he never had any concerns. The show will go on no matter what. Uh, Tamina talks about pulling double duty, winning the tag team, tur or winning the tag team turmoil match. Try saying that five times fast. On Saturday, only to uh, you know, turn right back around vie for the tag team titles against Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax on Sunday. So she and Natalia recap their family ties, obviously Natalia being the daughter of Jim the Anvil Neidhart and Tamina being the daughter of Jimmy Superfly Snuka. Uh, Tamina says it's hard to fill those shoes, and she kind of gives some background on her upbringing and breaking into the business, which I never knew before because she seems like a really sweet woman. She really seems like genuinely nice. I don't give a fuck about her in the ring, um, but as a person, she seems really, really nice, and I never knew any of this backstory before. So she talks about how she got into a car accident when she was young, like in her teenage years, or like when she was in high school or something. And that kind of prevented her from really doing anything with her life until after she had kids. So she wanted to give wrestling a shot. She tried it a little bit later than most people, but she got signed by WC, uh, WWE, went to FCW, debuted on the main roster in May of 2010 against the Hart Dynasty, including Natalia. So that was when they met in real life. Um, Natalia talks about always having to adapt and whether it be doing interviews or being a diva, being a women's wrestler, being a champion, being a manager, she's always been willing to adapt to whatever the company's had her do. As for Tamina, she's done so many things over the course of her career. Uh, she was a singles competitor at one point. She was with Santino on TV like a decade ago after the Uso stuff kind of ran its course. Cause she was with the Uso. She was on her own. 
She was getting pushed on her own as Tamina snuck out towards the Divas Championship for a little bit. She was the manager for AJ Lee. She joined Team Bad in 2015. She talked about here how she thought that would be the next New Day would be Team Bad and they would kind of be together for the rest of their careers, which, thank the frickin' Lord, did not happen because Sasha Banks would have been doomed. Team Bad was not bad, no pun intended, but Sasha Banks was so much more than that, even at that point. But Natalia told Tamina, you gotta be more selfish. Natalia has had her accomplishments. She's a former women's champion. Uh, she's had her moments in WWE. She's a former Divas champion, SmackDown women's champion. But she, you know, saw Tamina not getting those same moments. Tamina had never been a champion before in WWE prior to this. So she really encouraged her to be more selfish and really get that moment for herself. They became the first woman, according to them, to have two WrestleMania matches back to back on two you know, back-to-back -back nights or on the same event, just two different nights, whatever. Uh, so then we hear from Sheamus, who talks about how he grew up on wrestling and really got into wrestling thanks to his dad bringing home a VHS copy, I believe, of WrestleMania 2. And he really got drawn in by Macho Man Randy Savage. Great pick. Great taste there by Sheamus. Uh, upon arriving in WWE, and this is kind of like an abbreviated version of Sheamus's WWE career, he experienced success very quickly. Um, beating John Cena within six months of arriving on the main roster in 2009 to become the WWE Champion. He went from Cena to Randy Orton of the Royal Rumble to then Triple H at WrestleMania 26, uh, who he lost to, but still to even be in that spot was a pretty big deal. They recap his title wins from becoming World Champion at WrestleMania 28 to then becoming WWE Champion again um, at... Survivor Series 2015, cashing in Money in the Bank, becoming WWE Champion. And then we fast forward to the 2016 draft. Uh, just seven months after being the WWE Champion, he was picked last in the televised portion of the 2016 WWE Draft by the Raw brand. And he thought it was a serious fall from grace. He said right here that he felt like he was ready to leave. And it was around that point that Cesaro became a brother to him. They formed the bond, or they formed the, formed the bar and had a bond, rather. And he really got to relax as a character and be more of himself on the show. And he's always looking to his next goal, which brings him to the United States Championship at WrestleMania 37. Uh, we then hear from Rhea Ripley, who talks about how, as mentioned earlier, she's experiencing a lot of emotions going into a Raw Women's Championship opportunity at WrestleMania 37 Night 2. Uh, she enjoyed her WrestleMania 36 experience. She thought it was an amazing match with Charlotte, which it was. But she felt lost after she lost that match, and she felt like she lost confidence in herself. Because as she says here, she wasn't being portrayed the same way that she was before. So she's talking about the booking, which was fucking terrible. And I remember Triple H saying, oh, it's long-term storytelling. Well, I would love to know what that long-term storytelling is, because Rhea Ripley still has yet to beat Charlotte Flair. When the fuck are we getting that win over Charlotte Flair? It's been a year and a half now. Let's speed this thing up. You know what I mean? It really hasn't done Rhea any favors. But anyway, so she ended up having to build herself back up, entered the Royal Rumble, dominated. If it wasn't going to be her, she was happy with Bianca winning. And she really liked the fact that they were the final two in there because it kind of sent the message that they were the future of WWE's women's division, which they are. If WWE can stay the course with them anyway. Um, so she's excited for her new chapter on the Raw roster, confronting Asuka, her first official appearance on the show, uh, challenging her to a Raw Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 37, to which Asuka accepted. Uh, we then hear from Edge, and Edge talks about how Beth has always been there for him, and he appreciates her support. And he recalls retiring exactly 10 years earlier to the day, April 11, 2020, or 2011, rather, in Hartford, Connecticut, I'm pretty sure. Um, it was here in Connecticut that he retired on the uh, on the Raw show. So, um, yeah, and how crazy of a journey it's been from that point to where he is now, main eventing WrestleMania. And not only that, but Heyman brings up how all three of their careers almost ended. Edge retired in 2011. Never People never thought he would wrestle again. Daniel Bryan retired in 2016. People thought he would never wrestle again, at least not in WWE. And then you go to Roman Reigns, who didn't technically retire, but he almost had to. He was diagnosed with leukemia. And he came back a matter of months later as well. So it's a really inspiring main event for WrestleMania 37, the fact that they're all still here and headline of the show of shows. Uh, Beth says that she really looks forward to seeing Edge happy, which I thought was cool. And this is where we get all the recaps. So they recap the opening to the event. Uh, Tamina talks about having butterflies and also the fans chanting for her during her match with Natalia against Shayna and Nia for the tag team titles. And she really allowed herself to take in the moment. 
And uh, they didn't win the match that night, but Natalia says they did win over the WWE Universe, which, I mean, I guess. I still don't give a fuck about these two, but... I mean, to me, and it to her credit, to get a great reaction for whatever reason. I have no idea why. And she talks about the support and all this other shit. Uh, Sheamus said that he was also nervous going into his match at WrestleMania. They recapped the match, which was great. And he was super pumped afterward, you know, being congratulated by Bruce Pritchard and Vince and Triple H and everyone else backstage. I saw a Nick Khan appearance at one point backstage. Uh, Mr. Uh, Firing Spree over there. But he says that he goes out there like he's never accomplished anything, which is why he's always hungry and motivated. And I'm pretty sure he has said that somewhere else before. I don't know where that would have been. Um, but that just sounds familiar. But I thought that was cool of him to say. Rhea Ripley just wants everything in a WrestleMania match to be perfect. So it's been kind of a nervous, nerve-wracking, insane day for her. But she admits that she walked out there that night with a, with a chip on her shoulder with something to prove. Uh, they recapped the Rhea ripley Oscar match that saw Rhea Ripley emerge victorious as the new Raw Women's Champion. And it was really special for her as her boyfriend was in the front row. She said her friends were there. We saw Karrion Cross and Scarlett. So, I don't know if those are her friends and that's what she's referring to. <laughs> I, I don't think so, but we did see them in the, in the front row, which was interesting. I didn't, I didn't think they were there, but I guess they were. Um, so, anyway, she talks about that. And now Edge... Edge discusses how amazing it is and how amazing it feels to be in the main event of WrestleMania. They recap their tremendous triple threat match. Um, Beth meets up with Edge afterward. They kind of console each other and really sink in the moment. And Edge said that the crowd really makes a difference. And he was really proud of that match. And it felt like five minutes being in there, but it was actually like a half an hour. And that was about it as far as that stuff goes. We kind of get a quick recap of both nights of WrestleMania 37 to close out the 24 here. With Cesaro saying the WrestleMania was a team effort. Uh, Sheamus gives props to all the people behind the scenes that keep him going, which I thought it was cool they included that, including the people that put together this very special. Uh, MVP says that roar of the crowd really is what makes the bumps and bruises worth it. And Edge says Edge says that afterward he's eating cookies, which got me hungry after uh, got me hungry after listening to that. So I thought it was a great way to close out the episode. This was a really good episode of WW Twenty Four, a lot like the first episode was uh, for Mania Thirty Seven. This was the first edition of 24 that they've done for a Mania that they've actually split up into two different parts. Um, but they have done a 24 in every Mania, I'm pretty sure, dating back to 30. So there's six, seven other episodes of 24 as far as the Manias are concerned. All are worth watching. The 24s are always a great piece of business. This was no exception, exception as I said earlier. So take the time, seek it out, give it a watch. It's great stuff. WrestleMania 37, Night 2, edition of WWE 24. And thank you guys for checking out my review of the episode, and thank you for your patience. I know it's been three weeks, but we're finally here. Finally got it done. Appreciate your patience. So hopefully it won't be another three weeks before I do another one of these Network and Chill videos, uh, breaking down whatever's new on Peacock, which lately has not been much, but they did, as of this recording, put up that uh, 9-11 tribute documentary that they did called Never Forget on Friday, I'm pretty sure, so I'll probably watch and recap that at some point as well. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.